the very first Panther woman, Jeanne Toussaint. She's about to leave a permanent mark on the Maison Cartier. This is where it all started. Paris, the 1920s, the roaring 20s. Paris then was... Um, So every Cartier Pantel design is a different creative adventure. I have to ask myself, is she joyful, wild, or untamable? With each drawing, the animal reveals her personality, while also preserving the style of the maison, of course. As I sketch, her anatomy becomes clearer. The pencil glides over the tracing paper and creates movement, muscles, tension, and life. Then I move on to the gouache. I capture the light, I highlight the reliefs, I play with the transparencies, I reveal the sparkle of the stones that will adorn her coat, and I focus on her reflective emerald eyes, of course, the signature, which determines her final expression with her placement and size. And that's it. There you have it, La Pantère. Sculpting means transforming gouache on paper from two to three dimensions. And we always start with modeling clay. I have to understand every line in order to capture her feline nature as accurately and realistically as possible. I study 
to get a feel for the designer's vision. If I have any doubts, I can question them. And how do you see the aura around the Bontaya? I'd say there's a kind of tension. She was heading in one direction, but something caught her eye along the way. And she still doesn't know what pose to adopt. She has an open mouth. Can you see them? Yes, yes, I can. This is what felines do to capture information. How can we convey the movement, power, emotion, and vitality of the animal? I like to concentrate on the paws so she looks like she's in action. I mold the muscles until I feel their tension. When it's finally molded, I move on to the wax. This material allows me to create the finest details. Everything must then be considered and checked to ensure that the aesthetic intentions respect the technical constraints to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. All the details of the creation are carefully planned because once it's been transformed into metal, well, there's no going back. It's time for her to become metal. So here are the cast iron parts. They've been cut to allow access to every corner so they can be fully polished and set in inaccessible places. Once it has been cleaned, I move on to assembling everything. I connect the panther's body, head, tail, and legs together, and the creation takes shape. I need to refine the adjustments again and prepare their surfaces for the polisher. Polishing restores the shine of the metal. Suddenly, the panther comes to life. It changed from matte to shiny by using very specific methods. First, brushes are used to soften the surface, and then cotton threads are used to reach the most inaccessible parts. What's the point in polishing the metal that will be under the stones? To maximize the reflection of light and enhance the radiance of each stone. Now the Pontera is ready to receive her spots. I then need to insert the onyx scissor sapphires that I've cut to size and polished one at a time by hand. Cutting a stone to measure on the setting is also a signature of Cartier's expertise. For one spot, for instance, it takes me around an hour of work. On this one, here, there are 51, and you will never find two that are alike on the same piece. I have to, more than anything, respect the irregularities produced from the jeweler's work by hand because they create rhythm and stick to the muscles, which gives what I call lifelike movement to the feline. To be a gemologist, you have to be a passionate naturalist. I'm involved in the purchase, sorting, and selection of the stones, which I choose in consultation with the designer. Are the stones arrived? Yes, I have some beautiful eye-clean stones with no inclusions that would distract the eye. This Panther has a diamond body, onyx or sapphire spots, and emerald eyes. Well, now I want you to tell me how you're going to create the living character of the animal. Ah, well, I'll concentrate on finding the right color combinations. Then I'll build the reliefs according to the sizes and shapes. This will give the paving a sense of continuous volume that will enhance every aspect of the Panther. Everything has to be visible. The attitude, the muscles. I'll make sure the metal disappears, but the movement remains. The eyes are always the greatest challenge for me. Not only do I have to find the perfect emerald, but I have to do it twice. I combine stones in pairs that are similar in shape and color. Once mounted, they will be the first thing to catch the eye. Setting is all about adding them. I start to mount the stones, diamonds, onyx, sapphires, and emeralds in their respective places. What type of setting can you imagine for these stones? A bead setting. So I set the whole body with a grain setting. I encircle each stone with teeny metal beads that hold it in place. While it takes about 25 minutes for each spot, I need one and a half hours to set the eyes. Firstly, because the emeralds are finer and more fragile, but also, and most importantly, because the eyelash effect under the eye requires me to be even more meticulous. I decide to use the fur setting. The beads are stretched and twisted into threads to give it the appearance of a panther's coat. 
Once finished, her eyes come to life. This is an inimitable setting that Cartier has maintained for 50 years. More than just a savoir-faire, it's a signature of the Cartier Panthère. 